Hey guys, this is Candle, and I'm sorry for the poor lighting. I tried recording this video earlier, but something kind of screwed up when I uh, went to edit it. So this is another gaming pickups video because recently we had the Steam Summer Sale and I did in fact pick up a few things. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Okay, first up, I finally got the DLC for Fallout 4. I haven't actually played through any of it yet, but I'm pretty excited to finally be able to go through uh, Nuka World and Far Harbor. Uh, I also picked up Final Fantasy V and VI, as well as Final Fantasy IX. Uh, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, as you can probably see looking at this. I've got, like, probably half of the ones on Steam, and it's just, it's a shame that the versions of V and VI on PC are pretty crappy. They're really just ports of the mobile versions, but still, it, it's good to have them. Nine, however, I am pretty excited to play. The My only issue with that is... Uh, the game was originally made for standard definition screens, and so the uh, all the models look nice in HD, but the problem is all the backgrounds were pre-rendered and, again, designed for standard definition screens, so they're, they look a little bit blurry on modern screens nowadays. So, uh, next up, since we're already talking about Final Fantasy, we may as well talk about the one physical game I've picked up recently, which is... Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. This is actually the limited steelbook edition. It looks really, really nice. I actually got this uh, version of it rather than the normal one because I have the original steelbook uh, collector's edition of the original version of this game. It's actually one of the first collector's editions I ever bought, really. Uh, it's a really nice game, really fun. It's a full, proper HD remaster on the PS4 uh, with some extra features from the International Zodiac Job Edition uh, which, despite the name, was only ever available in Japan for some reason. Um, my only gripes with it right now is because of the new job system. You have uh, you can choose up uh, you can choose one out of twelve jobs for each of your characters, but you only have six characters and twelve jobs, and there's just it doesn't seem to let you uh, repick or, or choose and start over or anything like that. I'm hoping at some point you can choose a second job for your characters, because me being me. I've been choosing jobs that fit the uh, the actual characters properly. So like Balthier is a machinist, which is like guns. Fran is uh, an Ulan, which is spears. Uh, uh, Vaughn is, I forget the, the name uh, of the, the job, but it's the one with the daggers. Uh, Pinello is, is the hunter with the bows and Bosch is a knight. Uh, Ash, I haven't actually added her to my party yet. I'm only like 10 hours in right now. But uh, I have no mages right now, so I'm thinking I might end up making her either a white mage or a red battle mage. That way I can at least have a decent amount of, of white magic so, so I can heal people up properly and everything. But still, it, it's a lot of fun. It's really nice to play it in HD. So moving on from that, I did finally pick up Firewatch, which is kind of a, a three, four hour long walking simulator almost. There, there is a little bit more interactivity than that. Uh, I haven't actually gotten it far enough into it yet myself, though. Uh, something else I picked up was Her Story, which was a really, really interesting in game. Uh, some people might not even consider the game. Basically what it is, is it's only like one or two hours long, but you are presented with like an old like Windows 98, Windows 2000 uh, interface where you have a... Uh, a video database that you can sift through by using certain keywords. It starts you off with the word murder, but you can choose any of them. And basically what you're doing is you're using those keywords to watch video clips of this woman's responses in police interviews about her husband's murder. And as the as it goes on, you're uncovering a much more complex and interesting story than you're first led to believe. And basically the only way you can link to different clips is to pick out certain keywords and search words and use those. And uh, it, it's really, really interesting the way it goes on. Uh, beyond that, I also got Last Express, the gold edition. Uh, previously, I'd had this game uh, for PC. I picked it up a, a year or two ago from Goodwill, but it was actually a sealed copy. Now, this game's not actually worth all that much even sealed. It's only worth about make, maybe 35 bucks sealed. But considering how old it is, I doubt I can get the disc to work properly on my computer anyways. So I've been waiting to actually play it until I could finally pick up a copy here, which I finally did. Uh, I also got Life is Strange, which is an episodic point-and-click adventure. Uh, I believe it's kind of in the same veins as the Telltale Adventure games, although it was published by Square Enix. I have not actually played this yet. I'm really interested to, to play it, though. Uh, moving on from that, 
We got Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Now, Shadow of uh, War is coming out soon later this year, and I have played this game previously on the Xbox One. Uh, back in 2014 when it came out, my, my desktop computer had taken a dump and died, so I couldn't really play big games like this on my computer at the time because all I had was a laptop. And uh, so I, I played this then, but I never got around to playing the DLC. And when I saw that the Game of the Year edition with all the DLC was only 4 bucks during the Steam sale, I had to pick it up. Uh, speaking of other sales, I also got No Man's Sky. I was never going to buy this at 60 bucks. It just was not going to happen. Not the kind of game that I would be willing to pay that much for. But I saw it was discounted to about $24. Still a little bit higher than I really wanted to play, especially or uh, pay, especially now that I've actually played it a little bit. I would say it's really only worth like maybe 15, 20 bucks, uh, unless it's that kind of thing that you're into. I personally find it a little bit boring. Uh, you're just flying around, exploring planet after planet that is different but identical, and that's really about it. Um, moving on from that, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider 20 Year Celebration. Again, this was a game I played on the Xbox uh, One when it first came out. It was exclusive to Xbox consoles at the time, and I was doing Let's Plays, uh, so I really wanted to jump on it at that point. However, I never picked up much more of the DLC other than the Baba Yaga one, because that was a story-based expansion. And with the 20 Year Celebration Edition, it also came with Blood Ties, which was an another kind of similar uh, story expansion. It was almost uh, more of just puzzles and that's it taking place in croft manor i believe uh it takes place during the middle of the story like the, the brief period uh in between the prologue in in syria and the main game in siberia where there's like a couple cutscenes in the manor that's when it takes place however the full exploration that comes about at the end of the croft manor experience really takes place at the end of the game after it's all uh, said and done and it's really really interesting it sheds some light on the croft family in this continuity this is a full-on reboot uh, 2013 was a full-on reboot from the previous continuities from the original six games plus the legends trilogy so there's slightly different stories uh for everything now and it's it's really kind of interesting although Lara's mother does still die in a plane crash in Tibet, which I think has been there since almost from the beginning. But it, it's still really interesting to see how they all play that out. Um, let's see, what else did I get? Oh, yes, uh, Sonic CD. I actually missed this one the first time around uh, trying to record this video. I had originally had this game for Windows 95. Not Sega CD like some of you might have assumed, but for Windows 95. And it blew my mind at the time that I could play a full Sonic game on the computer instead of the Sega Genesis. I unfortunately no longer have that copy, but it is playable through Steam, and uh, funnily enough, it includes both the Japanese and the North American soundtracks for the game. For some reason, they did two separate soundtracks. I don't know why, but they did two separate soundtracks. Um, I've heard the Japanese soundtrack is better, but I haven't played it with it enough to uh, figure that out. However, the original uh, Sonic Boom theme from the North American soundtrack trumps all. All right, I only have a couple more things from that, really, after that. Uh, I picked up That Dragon Cancer, which is a really beautiful game. It's it's pretty short, only like an hour or two long. It's a really, really beautiful game, though. Um, and actually, the story that goes along with it is really beautiful, too. Basically, this family had a infant son who was diagnosed with cancer, and he beat the first round of it, but eventually his cancer resurfaced, and unfortunately the type of cancer he had is always a 100% fatality when it resurfaces. And so they ended up losing him at about four or five years old. So eventually they made this game as a way to memorialize him and explain their struggle and deal with their grief. And it, it really is a beautiful game, and uh, it's something everybody should play. I think it's usually only like about 10, maybe 20 bucks. But it's definitely worth it. And uh, that is it. So sorry to end it on a little bit of a downer. But that's all the games I have this time. Uh, Gamer Reader Writer will be back next week. New videos come out every Sunday by 8 a.m. Eastern. With new blog posts on the 15th of every month. You can find a link to the blog in the description down below. Please remember to leave any comments and suggestions you might have. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.